This is CNN. Live from the world's financial capital, New York City, this is Moneyline with Lou Dobbs. Good evening. I'm Bill Hartley. Lou Dobbs is on assignment in Tokyo. The president tonight is fighting the flu and the Japanese government. His health is fine. Trade negotiations, however, are described as tough. President Bush fainted at a state dinner last night. His doctors blamed the common flu. Earlier, the president and the Japanese prime minister agreed to try to improve the world economy. But they may still be worlds apart on improving trade between the two countries. Japanese automakers agreed to boost imports of American-made cars and increase imports of U.S.-made parts. But not as much as the automakers and the Bush administration want. Trade negotiations continue. Moneyline's Lou Dobbs joins me now from Tokyo with the latest on the president's health and the status of trade talks. Lou, good evening or good morning in your case. Good morning, Bill. Uh, here in Tokyo, the meetings have begun between the U.S. business delegation accompanying the president and now by uh, Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady and, of course, led the business delegation by Commerce Secretary Mossbacker. I've just left the first round of those meetings this morning that uh, the concern for the president's health subduing, I think, considerably some of the exchange, even though both Secretary Mossbacker and Secretary Brady reassured those business leaders and their Japanese hosts that the president is uh, coming along, or as uh, Secretary Mossbacker said, doing just fine. The president, I think, as you are now aware, will not be resuming his full schedule today. Secretary Mossbacker saying that he will decide exactly what events to participate in. At this point, we do believe he will be uh, going to his press conference scheduled for this afternoon later in Tokyo. Now, this first morning's uh, meeting between U.S. and Japanese business delegations, getting off to something of a rocky start. Secretary Mossbacker reiterated the U.S. government's position that something must be done about that trade imbalance, that 41 billion dollar deficit with Japan and it must be done now. Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady followed up, reiterated much the same point. Now the head of the Keidan Ran, the association of uh, top businesses here in Japan, the leader of the Keidan Ran, responded by saying that the Japanese market and economy is substantially open. The tone moving to the confrontational even in these uh, informal meetings between the Japanese and U.S. business delegations. So that's where we are. No agreement uh, apparently in sight. Lou, uh, will the president's absence from some of these meetings uh, have a, play a, a major factor, do you think, in, in any lack of agreement? Well, I, it's unclear as to what the effect will be, but as I say this morning, concern uh, for the president's health uh, certainly dampened, uh, added a, a, a note that was uh, less than positive to the meeting. There is a wide division between how the Japanese and the United States uh, see free world trade. The United States saying that the Japanese system is far from open and the Japanese maintaining throughout each session that their markets and economy are indeed open. Lou, one final quick question. So often in the past, uh, America has signed trade deals with the Japanese, assuming that X, Y, and Z were going to happen, and then later on finding, well, no, the Japanese actually had a different idea, and this isn't going to happen. Is there any indication that what has been agreed to before uh, is in this, or is it firm, solid, down there in black and white? Well, as I say, there, there is no agreement at this point. Uh, that, that will come later today if indeed agreements are to be reached in substance. Uh, Red Polling, the chairman of Ford Motor today, reiterating that this $41 billion budget deficit, uh, trade deficit rather, has to be reduced and has to be reduced over the next five years. It was also interesting that uh, Secretary Brady said he does not, in, if I may paraphrase the secretary, saying he doesn't really care why that trade deficit exists. It's got to be redressed and put in balance. Now, the president has succeeded in this trip in, in positioning himself as the world's preeminent advocate of free world trade. And this delegation of businessmen as well as commerce and treasury officials are reiterating over and over again that Japan is the exception to the definition of open trade in a world trading system. All right, Lou, thank you very much. And a bit later, we will have Lou's full interview with Secretary of the Treasury, Nicholas Brady, that was taped earlier. World financial markets shuddered briefly when the president collapsed. Gold prices surged, bonds in the dollar fell. Stocks plunged in London and opened lower in New York. 
The Dow Industrials fell by 23 points, then gained all that back and then some, and then lost it all, finally closing less than one point lower. Oil prices today dropped to an 18-month low. Light sweet crude down another 82 cents a barrel to $17.87. The outlook calls for even lower prices. Demand is off, supply is high. Terry Keenan reports from New York. Energy traders jumped to sell oil as prices plunged Wednesday. What's been a four-day slide has taken more than a dollar and a half off a barrel of oil. The warm weather and cold economies caused by the recession in the United States and parts of Europe come at a time when OPEC production is at a 20-year high. OPEC cannot sit back and wait either for colder weather or uh, a, a, an expansion in, on, in the world economic sphere. They must come up with a game plan, a, a production quota uh, that's realistic and respected. Saudi Arabia convinced other OPEC members to keep production high at about 24 million barrels a day when the cartel met last fall. World oil prices were already sliding. Now the benchmark U.S. crude is down about 25 percent from its October high, and that's without much production from two key members, Kuwait and Iraq. Some way, somehow, in the next 60 to 180 days, there will be Iraqi crude hitting the market. Now the question is, of course, how much and where? Iraqi officials are now in Vienna trying to persuade the United Nations to drop its Gulf War embargo. Before that, Iraq produced about 2.5 million barrels a day. Meanwhile, Kuwait's output is running close to 600,000 barrels a day and rising. But it and other OPEC members cannot afford to have oil trading at these prices for long. The Saudis can, but it could mean a long and difficult meeting when OPEC's price monitoring committee meets in Geneva early next month. Terry Keenan, CNN Business News, New York. And coming up, an interview with Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady. His views on trade, interest rates, and the world economy. That's next on Moneyline. True driver's car in a luxury coupe? Sounds to me like you're talking import. The Eldorado Touring Coupe by Cadillac. In the fraction of a second it takes to depress the accelerator, you'll acquaint yourself with the surge of its V8, the adaptability of its speed-sensitive suspension, and reacquaint yourself with the pleasures of driving. The 1992 Cadillac Eldorado Touring Coupe is here, and there's never been a car like it. Dan Larson knows a secluded course where the holes are challenging, but the fees aren't. Now, where do you suppose he'd rent a car? Budget, where every rental passes 25 quality checks and price is not a handicap. The smart money is on budget. Now at budget, get an economy car with unlimited mileage for just $99 a week, $24.99 each additional day. The smart money is on budget. Nighttime backache? Try Momentum Muscular Backache Formula. Momentum has extra medicine to help relieve your backaches so you can sleep. My back feels great, and I slept like a log. Momentum Muscular Backache Formula. Introducing new Rice Aroni Broccoli au gratin. Everyone in America is going to love it. Okay, so there's one guy. New Broccoli au gratin. The San Francisco tree. President Bush and Prime Minister Ki Chimiyazawa agreed to help the world economy grow by first improving economic growth in their own countries. President Bush is faced with recession, re-election, and a budget agreement that limits spending that could stimulate growth. Moneyline's Lou Dobbs, in a wide-ranging interview conducted Wednesday in Tokyo before the president's flu attack, asked Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady whether the president will try to break that agreement. The president is committed to staying to the discipline in the budget agreement because he feels it's very important that long-term interest rates continue to come down. With, with those interest rates declining right now, uh, that's a favorable condition. There's no concern about fiscal stimulus at this point resulting in heightened concerns about inflation? I don't, I don't think so, Lou. I, I would say that anybody who's got one friend in the private sector 
uh, and would be willing to ask him about uh, whether we've got inflation in the United States, we'll find out very quickly that we don't. I mean, I know that the statistics indicate that there is still is some, but that's a mystery to me, and I've never had it explained as to why it exists. Mr. Secretary, it, with fiscal stimulus, lowering rates, monetary policy now uh, easing uh, at, at a rapid rate for the past, better than the past year, how much room is left to ease in, in your judgment in terms of monetary policy? Well, Lou, uh, obviously this is the purview of the Federal Reserve and, and the Bank of Japan, independent authorities. Uh, but the fact that there have been significant cuts in the United States this last year, the last one 1%, uh, the lowest discount rate in some 17 or 18 years, uh, <clears throat> still we have a positive uh, uh, interest rates at a time in the recovery when that's not uh, as fast as it should be. So. Who knows? If it's needed, I have no reason to suspect that it might not be possible. Turning to the Japanese side, uh, great concern about the strength of the yen, the suggestion that it should strengthen further to address the president's uh, concern, great concern about this trade deficit by lowering interest rates in Japan and at the same time trying to preserve the strength of the yen. Are the Japanese going to face a conundrum, a, a dilemma that they uh, are going to find very tough? I don't think so, Lou, because the, the hallmark of the Bush administration has been a yen-dollar relationship that's fluctuated within a, a rather narrow band as compared to precipitous drops in previous years. So uh, the, today's communique between uh, the uh, uh, president and Prime Minister Miyazawa uh, said that uh, they were satisfied with the exchange rates at this particular level, and, and uh, which, of course, uh, uh, resulted in a weakened dollar in, in recent weeks, and so uh, I think it'll be fine. So further stimulating, uh, at least the hope, stimulating further U.S. exports with well, a cheaper course, dollar. Well, of course, at this level of uh, exchange rates, the United States exports are very attractive, and uh, I think they will continue to be. A lot of industrialists have told me, industrialists have told me uh, that uh, they expect the export situation in the United States to consider continue strong if we have strong world growth. And today's uh, joint statement on growth by uh, Prime Minister Miyazawa and the President addresses that particular problem, world growth, so that exports, uh, the world reverberating nature of exports, uh, exports can continue in a strong fashion. However, growth has been declining uh, for the past decade. The G7 nations are, are, are very concerned. Uh, at this point, is 3.5% growth, in your judgment, attainable? In Japan? In, in Japan. Yes, I, I think it is. The Japanese authorities are confident of it. Uh, their budget, uh, uh, which aims at uh, stimulating their domestic economy, uh, uh, should uh, uh, be a, provide a uh, platform where imports will come in. They will use from other countries. They will use more of their own industrial output themselves inside Japan. Therefore, their trade surplus should uh, uh, do what they say it does, stay where it is or decline. And in the United States? Well, in the United States, I expect that uh, during this next year that our trade surplus will be better. And the growth rate? I mean, our trade deficit will, be, will, will decrease, that the, the figures will continue to go down as they have the last two or three years. And the growth rate? Growth rate in the United States, obviously, at this particular point in time, uh, Lou, uh, we're disappointed with the uh, uh, operation of the economy. But I would think that uh, the actions of the Federal Reserve, the fact that the uh, 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 the president's budget will be growth-oriented, will be jobs-oriented, uh, stimulus for uh, certain areas such as housing, industrial activity, all aimed at producing jobs. Uh, I expect that uh, the United States economy will pick up, as most forecasters believe, uh, during the spring of 1992. Mr. Secretary, thank you. Thank you, Lou. My line will continue in just one moment. Tonight, thrust into the spotlight of Iran Contra, now conservative guest host Oliver North plays the right field to Mike Kinsley's left in the crossfire. Tonight, 7.30 Eastern on CNN.
For those of you who have been reluctant to wear a hearing aid, Miracle Ear has more great news. If you have trouble hearing in noisy situations, the exciting Miracle Ear Clarifier may be your answer. The Clarifier features a special filter that automatically reduces background noise. In a restaurant situation, it picks up the noises I want to hear, but the uh, other noises are just moved off into the background. If you or someone you know thinks they may be suffering from hearing loss, call Miracle Ear at this number and receive helpful information. It really makes a lot of difference in, in your way of hearing and in your, in your way of life. Call this number. Miracle Ear will send you a booklet on better hearing, plus a coupon for a free hearing test. Call today. Learn about all the good news from Miracle Ear. A lot of people don't even, don't even know you got it, especially the one I got, the design that I got. Call this number. Find out if Miracle Ear can help you. The man who lives in this house made good money in stocks. The man who lives in this house made even more money selling him the stocks. If you'd like your money to make more money for you instead of someone else, call Oldie Discount. We'll provide you with personal service and investments to help you achieve financial success. So move up to Oldie, America's full-service discount broker. NBA Wednesday on TNT. The Lakers still rule the courts with Worthy, Perkins, and Scott. Yes! But David Robinson objects. The Lakers and Furs hold court. Special session tonight at 8 on TNT. Bigger than life. Lower interest rates are a big incentive for U.S. companies to sell debt at cheap yields. So sell they did. Almost $8 billion worth of corporate notes and bonds have been floated just in the last two days. Casey Wyan has the story from New York. Corporate bond traders say business hasn't been this brisk in more than five years. The reason, interest rates haven't been so low since 1986. More than $5 billion in new issues hit the market Wednesday, on top of $2.5 billion in new corporate debt the day before. Interest rates today for big borrowers are substantially lower than they were just four weeks ago. Uh, we're seeing corporate treasurers just pile into the market to take advantage of those rates. Leading the way Wednesday, the Tennessee Valley Authority with a $2 billion new issue. Ford issued $700 million in bonds and GMAC $500 million in notes. Another reason for the rush of corporate bond issues, companies are taking advantage of low interest rates to refinance their debt. And that's expected to keep the corporate bond market hopping for the next several days. Even with so many new corporate issues, underwriters say there is no immediate danger of a bond glut. At this point, I, I don't think there is oversupply. Obviously, if, if issuance continued at these levels all year, uh, it could push corporate spreads out. But we don't see that happening necessarily. If it does, that could be good news for the economy. A continued rush of corporate bonds would likely signal companies are borrowing to invest in new plants and equipment, not just to cut interest costs. Casey Wyan, CNN Business News, New York. The flood of corporate debt on the market, taking away from today's Treasury note auction. Demand slightly weaker than expected, so yields rose. Seven-year notes yielding 6.40%. The market was looking for about 6.39%. No record for the Dow today, and that's news, because it is only the second time in the last nine sessions that's happened. Market watchers saying the blue chip rally is starting to run out of steam. Money flowing to smaller stocks, which surged to their ninth straight record high. The Dow closing down just nine-tenths of a point, and we'll start tomorrow at just a touch under 3,204. Trading was very heavy today at almost 300 million shares, and gainers on the big board leading a Van, uh, leading decliners by more than 10 to 7. New York Stock Exchange Composite Index picked up a half a point. Standard & Poor's 500 up 7 tenths of a point. Dow Transports lost 2 and 2 thirds. The utilities were down about a fifth of a point. On other markets, the NASDAQ Composite Index of over-the-counter stocks up 8 points. That is the 13th straight gain for OTC stocks. Volume set a new record there, 315 million shares. Advancers ahead of decliners, 13 to 8. The American Stock Exchange hit its fourth record high in a row, up one and three quarter points, trading heavy at 22 million shares. Advancers ahead of decliners by three to two. Tonight's money line movers, Woolworth climbing one and a half. The retailer today saying it will close or revamp 900 stores. That's 10% of its operations. Analysts applaud the move as long overdue. 
Gensia Pharmaceuticals soaring eight and a quarter, a leader on the over-the-counter market today. Investors are enthusiastic about its drug for heart disease. It lets the body produce its own natural defenses. Critical care also soaring, six and five-eighths there. Earnings are expected to surge as it plans to enter the outpatient surgery business. Best Buy rallying three and three quarters. The retail chain reporting a 16% jump in December sales. Ethel sliding by two, pressured by questions about whether the government would approve its gasoline additive. Microsoft adding four and a quarter after positive comments from analysts who predict good fiscal second quarter earnings. Among widely held stocks, Nations Bank up by one and a half. But after the close, Moody's cut ratings on $2 billion of debt of NCNB and CNS Sovereign. They, of course, merged into Nations Bank. General Motors down by seven-eighths. Motor Trend magazine named the Cadillac Seville Touring Sedan the 1992 car of the year. IBM lost two and a quarter. U.S. Air up an eighth. It received court approval to buy some of Continental Airlines' assets. And Texaco losing one and an eighth after the big drop in oil prices today. The government closes the book on another insider trading scandal. Federal prosecutors dropping tax charges against four people involved in the Princeton Newport case. Last year, the U.S. Court of Appeals reversed racketeering convictions in that case. Case had been closely watched because the Princeton Newport partners were accused of conspiring with Bruce Newberg. Now, he was an associate of Michael Milken. Newberg was convicted of securities fraud in the Princeton case, but the government has dropped all other charges against him. Coming up on Moneyline, Wall Street reacts calmly to President Bush's illness, unlike the last time he fell ill. This time, why the change? Mr. Dietitian, I bet you don't get enough fiber every day. I also bet you think high-fiber cereals don't taste good. Well, here's one that does. Fruit and Fiber. It's the only high-fiber cereal with this delicious combination of crispy bran flakes, fruit, nuts, and crunchy oat clusters. Mmm. Try Fruit and Fiber, and I bet you'll be eating more fiber and liking it. Post Fruit and Fiber Cereal, the great-tasting way to get high fiber every day. I hate to break it to you, John, but it's going to be a big one this time. I'll give you a minute. Tough break. His first major repair, and it comes just two months after his manufacturer's warranty ran out. Worst part is he could have avoided this bill by signing up for Geico's mechanical breakdown insurance back when he bought his new car, or any time before it hit 11,000 miles. I suppose people think all extended warranties are too expensive. But with GEICO, you get longer coverage than many car dealers' extended warranties at savings of 30 to 50 percent. You can even choose between two coverage plans for the same low price. And you can still see your favorite mechanic. So take a word of friendly advice. Call GEICO today. For longer coverage at savings of 30 to 50 percent, it's mechanical breakdown insurance from GEICO. Sign up within 11 months or 11,000 miles of purchasing your new car or light truck. Call now for free information. What can I tell you, John? You should have had the coverage. To get rid of her gray, my wife can spend 40 minutes. But I discovered the five-minute hair coloring. The revolutionary discovery called Just for Men from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men and in five minutes, shampoo out. Gray is blended away. The look of my natural color is back in five minutes. That was me. And it won't fade or wash out. My hair takes forever, but you look great in just five minutes. The look of your natural color in just five minutes with Just for Men. Tonight, former President Richard Nixon talks about the end of the Cold War, the controversy over JFK, the upcoming presidential race, and more. Richard Nixon tonight on Larry King Live 9 Eastern on CNN. 21 people were injured today in a fire at a chicken processing plant in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Hundreds were evacuated from the plant operated by Pilgrim's Pride Prepared Foods. A fatal fire four months ago at a poultry plant in North Carolina resulted in a warning today from federal regulators. The Labor Department gave the state 90 days to improve its worker safety program or risk a federal takeover. That fire killed 25 workers. Good morning.
American mayors say their cities are being crushed by recession and government cutbacks. They're calling on Congress for help, testifying today before the Senate Budget Committee. City officials said the White House and Congress should spend cuts in the Pentagon's budget on the cities. They say federal aid to cities has declined by 64 percent in the last decade. Well, meanwhile, cities in the Midwest continue to offer the most affordable housing. Jackson, Michigan, Peoria, Illinois, and Kokomo, Indiana, topping the Association of Home Builders' latest survey on housing cost. The four toughest markets for a typical family to buy a home are all in California. And they're led by San Francisco. The stock market strength today is a remarkable tribute to the continuing power of the rally that started less than three weeks ago. That's the view of Myron Candell, and he tells us what he sees ahead. Mike. Bill, if the stock market ever needed an excuse to take some profits after a big rally, today was the day. Even though the president's illness was quickly ascertained not to be serious, it did send a shiver through the global financial markets. And it could have been a reason for at least a brief pullback. But today's drop was very, very brief. The Dow Industrials fell to a nearly 23-point decline, then shot up to a quick 24-point gain. After that, the Dow began drifting down, falling to a loss of 12 points in the final hour of trading, only to move up once again to close with a loss of less than a point. And big board advancing issues were well ahead of decliners. The Nasdaq and Amex indexes were hardly phased at all, powering ahead to new highs. So considering what might have been, it was indeed a very good day for the stock market showing the resiliency and strength of the rally that began two weeks ago last Friday when the Federal Reserve cut the discount rate a full percentage point. It proves once again the folly of trying to fight the Fed in an election year. In just 12 trading sessions, the Dow is up just under 10 percent, the Nasdaq index is up 14 percent, and records are falling nearly every day. What a way to end an old year and start a new one. The key question, of course, is where do we go from here? Let me trot out some old cliches, which, however, still ring true. First, the market never moves in a straight line. That means the correction is overdue. But barring a significant unexpected development, I don't think that will interrupt the rally for long. That's because of cliche number two, which is money moves in the market. And as long as interest rates stay this low or lower, that means to me the market is headed still higher. Bill? And cliche number three, the trend is your friend. But Mike, ultimately it is corporate profits that move a market. And corporate profits are terrible. Why is the market ignoring them? Well, because it's focusing on interest rates, uh, Bill. Eventually, if the market, if the economy doesn't improve and corporate profits remain low, the market will pay attention to that. But that won't happen for a while. All right. Mike, thanks very much. That's Moneyline for this Wednesday evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Hartley sitting in for Lou Dobbs. Good night from New York. Crossfire is next, and here's Michael Kinsley with a look at what's ahead. Michael. Bill, President Bush's dramatic collapse in Tokyo raises once again the question of Dan Quayle. Bush apparently just had the flu, but if it were something more serious, would the man he picked as vice president be qualified to take over? We'll be debating that tonight with two political insiders, and joining me as co-host will be Oliver North. How about that? Join us for the crossfire in just a moment.